Take old wooden elements, replace them with either, either metal or rubber. And please do stay seated in the back, guys. I know we're not going super fast, but you do still need to stay in your seats. Uh, trust me, we're talking about like a 900 foot tall building. This and this is going to be the same shot. Great picture, sit down. Place a lot of those wooden parts with the rubber and metal, so that was a big upgrade over the last winter. Uh, now, one big upgrade that happened in 2006, a few years back, was the Chicago Harbor Lock Towers. Basically, uh, the lock tower behind us on the right-hand side, that's the centralized control. Before that was there, the locks were controlled by four little pots. You may have seen the two behind us, and you can definitely see the two in front of us by each door. It used to be controlled by these two little pots on either side that would control each individual door. So it was a big upgrade when they moved to the control tower there. It was a pretty nice upgrade. But, perhaps even more impressive, was an upgrade they made to the huts themselves last summer summer it changed these huts because until then these huts had been painted beige now they're painted gray it's not really that extreme of a change let's see that the locks can get a little bit boring and basically a big concrete slab we're stuck in but don't worry folks lock doors are opening and when they open all the way we'll hear a great big buzzing sound letting us know it's safe to get out of the locks and onto the chicago river that should happen i don't know about Five, four, three, two, one. I was pretty close. That's, that's like a one second off thing there. I was uh, I was going by metric time. That's that's what screwed me up there. But uh, we are getting out of the locked onto the river now. And don't worry, that buzz is a good sound. I know it sounds like somebody just guessed, uh, you know, Dick Van Patten when it was really Dick Van Dyke and you know match game. But uh, don't worry, we're getting out of the locks onto the beautiful Chicago River. And if you look at your right hand side, you'll see a building you may have noticed on your way into Navy Pier this morning, Lake Point Tower. It's a curvy black building here, completed in the late 1960s. It's a bit of a tribute to a huge architectural figure in Chicago, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. Students Heinrich and Schiff Roll built this as kind of a tribute to him. They actually based it on one of his designs from back in the 1920s. Now, uh, over the years, Blue Roof is better, huge icon, but this one design he had back in the 20s never got built until the students made it. The thing is, they had to change something about the design. You see the building today, it kind of has three lobes, or you look from up top, it's like a funky little Y shape, like a three leaf clover almost. That's a little bit different from the original design, which is actually more of a four leaf clover, or a big X shaped design. And there are a few big reasons you do not want to have a big X shaped building. First of all, there's wind resistance, and in a windy city, wind can't be a problem. This Y shape is very good at deflecting wind, like Wonder Woman's bracelets. Not that I've worn them, but uh, it's very good at deflecting wind, unlike the original X shaped design. Another big problem with the X shaped design, as you might imagine, is the view. If you think about it, any big X shaped building is going to have some problems. So your views pretty much are going to be into other windows. Folks, but I would rather have a lakefront view than a creepy pervert view. That's just me. Who prefers the lakefront view than a creepy pervert view? Wow! Only two? Uh, wow. I, I did not know I was, uh, the photo I was signing up for today. But uh, probably the biggest problem you have though is an X shaped building. Well, we're glad we have the Y shaped building today. Think about it, folks. Pirates. Pirates see a big X. Especially as with it being right on the waterfront, you can imagine it was that X shape. Pirates would constantly be trying to dig up the foundation. That's terrible. Termites that are six feet tall with swords. Really intense. You do not want to have to deal with that. We clue have the design we have today. Oh, you probably notice in front of us we have a frame, so make sure to add Also, notice the Franklin Delano Roosevelt School Bridge. It's actually dedicated by Roosevelt on the evil world war. That's how important Chicago is. Even with world war breaking out, Hugest conflicts in the world history. He decides to come over to Chicago and dedicate a bridge. That's how cool we are. But like all of our bridges, we're going to be going over there. Back to the bridge. This is a seat down the that goes up and down on either side. It's two big sets of seesaws. Kind of like this. Yeah, pretty impressive. Wow. Now, uh, these they don't have a surprise beard. 
the guy behind them, but I hope you still get the basic idea. Coming up on our left hand side is an off white building with black stripes up and down the side. And it looks like it has a Diet Coke can on top. That is the Aeon Center. That building, when it was completed in 1973, was the tallest marble clad structure to ever be built. Fortunately, it lost that title uh, shortly after it was built. Not because another building was built with a lot of marble on the outside, but because they actually had to remove the marble. They didn't realize that the Italian marble they had covered the building in initially couldn't stand a tiny thing in Chicago we have called winter. You're not familiar with Chicago winters, they last about six to ten months out of the year, and it gets pretty cold. So basically that marble that was on the outside of the building started to chip, crack, and fall off. They had to resurface it with the North Carolina granite that is on there today at a cost of about one million dollars per floor. Oh my goodness. We're talking about an 80-story building, not a bill you're going to want to have to pay. So let's learn a lesson from this, folks. In fact, if you learn one thing from this tour, let it be this, folks. Listen up. Never, ever, ever take your marble for granite. <laughs> That's right, guys. You're at a big old speed with the cartoon dog. You will get some puns. And please do keep your arm inside, sir. Sorry about that. We need to keep that inside. Uh, we don't want any of our specially trained commando seagulls to attack. That's one way we ensure people keep their arms inside the boats. Because specially trained uh, seagulls attack any body part put outside the railing. So watch out for that. They are like SEAL Team 6 with wings. On our right-hand side, we have the Sheraton Hotel. This hotel is created by the past five U.S. presidents during their stay. So basically from uh, George Bush Jr., back five presidents all stayed here. The big reason for this is security. In fact, the top right floor of this building, those windows are all bulletproof glass. So I want to take a look up there. But if you can't see it too well, don't worry. You can't actually see if the windows are bulletproof. Because no one is shooting at them right now. Trust me, those cannons stand uh, bullet glass there. And this makes it really the perfect place if you have any former commanders in chief coming to town. Jimmy Carter in one of those suites with a sack full of peanuts he is good to go for a long weekend. Absolutely. On our left hand side, we have an area of buildings known as the Illinois Center. They kind of embody the Ludwig Mies van der Rohe typical approach to architecture. There's these big boxy buildings, very utilitarian, and there's less is more strategy. They're all incredibly boring. Illinois Center is their favorite building in Chicago. But they are efficient, so you have to take that trade-off uh, to some degree. They're very good as office buildings. In fact, they're so efficient. These were built on the old Illinois Central train line. Went from the Illinois Central train line to the Illinois Center uh, series of office buildings. They went from train to office building, only changing about three letters. Now, that's not efficiency. I don't know what is. I may not know what efficiency is. Just let you know. Coming up uh, right in front of the boat, actually, is the second tallest building. Not just on the river, not just in Chicago, not just in the United States, but in all of North America, the Trump International Hotel and Tower. You can't tell which building it is. It's the tallest one you could possibly see right now. The Trump uh, was uh, just a few years back, in 2009, and uh, was originally designed in 2003 to be even taller and more impressive. Amazing that this was posted on 
Craigslist. <laughs> Think about it, folks. Isn't that where you get like a used sofa from? Not necessarily a $32 million condo. It's like going to a yard sale for your red wedding dress. It's just not a smart idea. Probably shouldn't do it. Coming up on our left hand side, we have this dark gray and black building. Kind of an ominous tower here. This is the Leo Burnett building. Owned the Leo Burnett Advertising Agency. The company inside of there, those are the guys who created Toucan Sam, Tony the Tiger, the Jolly Green Giant, and the Pillsbury Doughboy, just to name a few. Now, if you're wondering how I know all this about the building, all I'm allowed to tell you by contract is this. It's almost like an ancient Greek or Roman temple with that really reflective modern glass. Almost looks like where Zeus would live if he was a robot. This building does have a big problem. United Airlines building has a big problem at night with those same reflective windows. At night, a lot of those windows can actually be very transparent, causing a lot of birds to fly into those windows. attacking the United Airlines building because they're jealous. We learned how to fly. Think about it. Does that make them the true angry birds? <laughs> That's right. I just made a cell phone game joke. But coming up on the right hand side is the oldest building you get to see on the tour today. Not the oldest in Chicago, but the oldest certainly on the river front that we get to see. 1914, Reed Burnock building. Reed Burnock was built in 1914 as the first building. before this never actually faced the river. That's because the river was not a pretty thing. As Chicago grew in size, grew in industry, everything from lumber yards to stockyards, this industry has decided it was a lot cheaper to just throw their waste into the river than hire a garbage man. So a lot of industries during the 1800s polluted the Chicago River. It was bad not only for the river and for the city of Chicago in general, but because that water would flow into the lake, contaminate the lakefront, Therefore, our drinking water. Because if we get tap water at any place here in Chicago, it's going to come from the We had to do something in the 1800s to clean up this water, clean up our tap water, clean up the lake, clean up the river here. What we did took about eight years. In 1892, we went to the to actually reverse the flow of the river. So instead of the river flooding into the lake, we reverse it. River here on our left hand side, and down south to some place we hope they wouldn't find it as much. Good. Next generation. Uh, they get our contaminated water, and as you might expect, they're a bit mad. If you throw garbage at somebody down the river, they're not going to be too happy. So they try to sue us. One of the big cities actually tried to prevent us from reversing. was ever since with a label saying completely unrelated notes. This tour is brought to you by Miller Lite. Enjoy the high life responsibly. For games range is one of them. That was completely unrelated. There's no way that those two things have any uh, but it is pretty amazing. So basically our water all flows way down that way is now. Uh, it's pretty Because before the reversal of the river, the river kind of teetered out down the south uh, branch. So we reversed it, we actually had to create a place for the water to go. So we created a sanitary and shipping canal connecting the Chicago River with the Des Plaines River, which connects to the Mississippi and out the Gulf of Mexico. So in theory, since 1900, when we reversed the flow of the river, we could take this boat all the way down to Mexico. That's right, guys. Who wants to go to Mexico? 
sorry, it's a 75 minute tour. Maybe it was a 75 hour tour, we'd go down, get some margaritas, come back, we had a whole good time there. Maybe next year we'll do that, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll get to teach you all about the Mississippi, maybe do some readings from Puck Bay. Yeah, a good old time had by all. We're coming up on our left hand side, this is the Great Lakes building. Uh, this is built on the site of the East. Thank you. 
one of two places I can do that at. They don't really like it when I do it at the Skydeck Ledge, so thank you for <laughs> indulging me. But I do have some sad news about the Sears Tower for all the fun. Unfortunately, we technically lost that name as of 2009. A company out of England, the Willis Trading Company, at least had enough space in the building, which was nice enough. They at least had a whole bunch of space. So they at least had so much, they actually got the naming rights. For at least the next decade, that building will legally be the Willis Tower. We're not big fans of that here in Chicago. We still like to call it by the old name. We still call it Sears Tower. Who's with me? Yay! Hey. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, Willis. That's someone with me. Way to go, man. Appreciate it. We'll Hello. take down Willis all by ourselves. Very cool. Hello. Now, on our right hand side, we have the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. It's a big U shaped building. It's what's called the Futures Exchange where people go to buy and sell what things are going to cost in the future. In other words, it's a place where a lot of wizards and fortune tellers work. I'm pretty sure that's the only people who could possibly work at a place like that. Maybe David Blaine, but that's probably it. On our left hand side, we passed through a water deck deep right there. We have the Riverside Plot. This building was built during a bit of a craze in the 1920s over Egyptology. That's why I actually designed it in part to reflect the Sphinx over in Egypt. See those little clock towers out front? Those are supposed to look like paws, uh, as opposed to the rest, which is the body of the Sphinx. It's a nice little Sphinx-shaped building. But please, folks, avoid this building. Uh, uh, because, frankly, we here at the Sea Dogs are not big fans of giant stone cat buildings. In fact, I think it is my duty as a member of the Sea Dogs to do this. Sorry, it's just a natural inbred thing. Uh, in sea dogs. But uh, also on the left hand side, the building I highly recommend, the Boeing Building. If for nothing else, then you can go into the lobby and you can call it the Boeing Building and make it really, really upset. It's a lot of fun trying for yourselves. This building has the one side that's a bit lower, the one side that's higher, making a big reverse L shaped building. The reason for this is that the lower half, the kind of bottom part of the L there, that lower half on that side is actually on a bit of less stable ground than the taller half of the building. And in fact, the ground over there was so unstable, most of the weight of that section of the building is actually supported from the top off the other side of the building, cantilevered off like a set of big hanging curtains. They're able to kind of work around their uh, their misfortune there. It was a nice the way they were able to uh, kind of work around uh, their own plot of land. But one of the coolest features that building has is a helipad. So you can, in theory, land a helicopter on top of that building. You can do it every day if you work there. And that makes sense. If you work for an airplane company, you should be flying to work. That's why most of us here at Sea Dog under a very similar strategy. We come into work in the morning by kayak. It is just smart business. I would recommend a similar strategy in most industries, unless of course you work in the sewage industry, probably wouldn't be the best way to get to work. And may notice there is a north branch of the river here, and we're not going up in for a couple big reasons. First of all, uh, the police are after us. Oh no! Okay, the police are fine. Uh, but one big reason we don't go up there, last year, roughly about this time, there was an alligator spotted up on the north branch, which was never officially caught or confirmed. The second big reason we do not go up there, I am a coward. But the third, probably most important reason, the north branch of the Chicago River is where the Dave Matthews Band incident occurred. I'm not sure if some of you guys just ate brunch, so I won't give you the full story. This is to say it involves a septic tank in the Chicago River. We'll have the whole story, uh, ask me later on, but uh, we don't really want to go up and repeat that story. Uh, so we're going to keep going down the main branch here. And if you take a look at your left hand side, we're coming up on one of the biggest buildings in Chicago, although not the tallest by far, the Merchandise Mart. Merchandise Mart here, huge commercial building, has dozens of companies inside it, has basically any kind of commercial space you could possibly think of. Such a big building, you can pick two regulation sized baseball diamonds on the roof. So big it has its own train stop. You look in the front here? double-decker bridge there on top there's train tracks for a famous elevated train that actually has a stop inside the merchandise mart for a couple of our train lines. This building is so big and I'm not kidding about this until 2000